Honey, come on. Easter service is starting. Good morning, everyone. He's risen. What? Hello, good morning, and welcome to our online church this morning. My name is Doug Jones, and I just want to thank you for tuning in with us this morning. Hey, you know, you could look like me. You could have got up this morning, no shower, no shave, just enjoying life to the fullest. Hey, right now, we want to take over Facebook. So now's the time. Put in on your Facebook, myrichlandchurch.online.church, and share it and invite somebody to join you at church this morning. We can't wait to worship with you guys. Have a happy Easter, and thanks again for joining us. Good morning, kids. It's good to see you this morning. I got a question for you. What special day is tomorrow? Yep, that's right. It is Easter Sunday. And you know, Easter Sunday, we celebrate it because Jesus rose on Easter Sunday. He was in the tomb, and on the third day, he rose to life. Isn't that amazing? We should celebrate that. This morning, I want to show you this right here. Anybody know what this is? This is a bulb. It looks kind of old looks kind of dead. And a lot of people say, if you were to take this bulb and put it in the ground, it wouldn't do anything. It would just lay there forever and ever and ever. But with God, He's got other plans. Because I bet you could probably tell me what would happen if I put this in the earth, right? And God watered it. And He put the sunshine on it. And He protected it. You know what would happen to it? It would grow into a beautiful flower. Isn't that amazing? amazing? Now, when Jesus was put to death on the cross, the people back then, they really thought that Jesus was dead. And it was kind of sad, but even though they thought he was dead, they knew that people don't come back to life. Well, Jesus is different. Jesus is God's son. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. I mean, I mean, after Jesus was buried in the tomb, the people left and they were sad. But it was on the third day that they discovered that Jesus rose from the grave. It was a miracle, a miracle. And the good news is that God is with us. Even though we can't see him and he's in heaven, he is with us. He loves us. He loves us so much, he wants us to have that same resurrection life that he has. You know, kids, this morning I want you to remember this one thing. When you go outside and you look at the flowers coming out of the ground, I want you to remember the miracle of life that God gives to them. But most of all, this Easter and even the weeks to come, when you think of Jesus Christ, I want you to think of the miracle of his life that he is living today and for each one of us. Can you do that? Okay, have a good Easter weekend.
the praise go up as the walls come down All creation, everything with breath Repeat the sound All his children, clean hands, pure heart Good grace, good God His name is Jesus Sweet wine, all you hear morning church. I'm so thankful that we get to sing and praise God. I love the line, let the praises go up as the walls come down, especially as we are having church without walls these days. It's awesome to be the church everywhere we go. Let's have a word of prayer together as we get into the word, uh, as we celebrate this Easter weekend together. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we love you and we thank you that in the midst of all this craziness, we can feel your presence, and we know you are here. We pray, Lord, that you, our Holy Spirit, would visit every home, every room, so that everyone who is listening to this at any time can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are God, and you are King, and you are the Father of the resurrected King. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to share with you a um, poem, uh, or at least an excerpt of a poem from uh, a, a man by the name of Charles Sino, and it goes like this. When you recover, what will you do? When you recover, will you still be you? Will you be stronger? Will you be new? When you recover from what you've been through. As I think about our current situation, our stay-at-home, lockdown, isolation situation, what will it be like when I recover? When I come out of my vault, when I come out of my room, my home, my tomb, if I can use that phrase for a moment here, will I be stronger? Will I be new? Will you be stronger? Will you be new? I'm going to share with you a, a, a pretty famous story in the Bible, and I consider this a recovery story. Jesus loved to visit this little place called Bethany because he had some really close friends there. 
And Mary was there, who loved to listen to him, loved to, to be able to, to sit at his feet and listen to everything he had to say. And then you had Martha, who was an amazing cook. And then you had Lazarus, uh, who was just a lover, just a great, great, great man who, of, 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 of God who, who loved to be a friend of Jesus and the disciples. And, and these three were close, dear friends of Jesus. And Jesus loved to go to Bethany because of that. And Mary, uh, uh, the, so the story is in, in John chapter 11. And in fact, let me give you a spoiler alert. In this story, Lazarus, the brother of the two sisters, dies. So just in case you didn't know that, now you do. So let me tell you the story. It's actually found in John chapter 11. And uh, it starts off with this. A man named Lazarus was sick. This is his friend. He lived in the town of Bethany where Mary and her sister Martha lived. And Mary was the woman who later put perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. And Mary's brother was Lazarus, the man who was now sick. And so Mary and Martha sent someone to tell Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Now you have to understand, in those days, there were no phones. You couldn't just send a text to Jesus and say, hey, by the way, you know, Lazarus is sick. No, no, they have to send a messenger. So they send a messenger to him. By the time he gets there, Jesus is there, and he hears the messenger, and he hears the words, the one you love is sick. Now, those are interesting words to use. Why didn't they say, by the way, Jesus, come hurry, because Lazarus is sick. They actually use the words, the one you love. Why do they do that? Well, let's continue with the story, and maybe we can figure that out. It says, when Jesus heard this, this, he said, this sickness will not end in death. It is for the glory of God. How about if Jesus said that to you? Wouldn't that be a little bit like, really? Okay, thanks, God. Glad we can bring glory to you, but I'm sick, right? What if, what if you found out that you know, Jesus would say, well, this whole coronavirus thing, you know, that, and you being locked down and losing your job, this is, all, this is all for the glory of God. Well, okay, thanks, God. Uh, what are we going to do about it, right? So Jesus is saying these words to bring glory to the Son of God. I'll continue reading. He says, Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. The author, John, makes sure that everybody understands this. This is, this is not something that is negotiable. Jesus definitely loves them. And then he says, but when he heard that Lazarus was sick, now catch this, he starts off with the, but when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Why? Man, I would think Jesus would be like, oh man, Serge is sick, I gotta go see him. You know, this is a situation, I gotta go there. But Jesus decides to wait until Lazarus actually dies. I don't know about you, but that was strange for me the first time I ever read that. And then I thought about something. Have I ever prayed for something and I used words to try to urge God? In other words, instead of saying, Lazarus is sick, and, hey, Jesus, by the way, it's the one you love that is sick. It's the one you love. I can tell you one thing that I've learned through the years. God will not be pressed or engineered to hurry. God's timing is perfect, and he will not be pressed or engineered to hurry to confirm to, con confirm to our timing. He will not do that. God's timing is perfect. And we have to be able to, to get to the point where we are following God's timing, not him following our timing. Okay, God. I think we've had enough to stay at home. I think we've had enough of the lockdown. People are tired. My hair is long. Uh, by the way, John, I hope you're sitting down because I couldn't take it anymore. And you're gonna have to do some repairing when, when you're finally, when this is all done. But I actually took a big razor thing and I just went for it on my own and I asked Nancy to help me out a little bit and the miracle of gel and the camera, you probably can't see how bad it really is but it's bad. But here's what I know. 
I know one thing about my hair. One day, it's going to resurrect. One day, it's going to come back. And that's what I'm waiting for. And when that happens, John, you're on. People are tired. They're going stir crazy. They're losing their jobs. They're scared. And, and guess what? We want to somehow hurry God. We want to urge God, look, can we stop this now? Can we make this happen? Can, 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 we, can we have this done by Easter so we can all go back to work and celebrate together? But God's timing is his timing and not ours. So the two days are up and Lazarus is fully dead. And the disciples and Jesus begin to have this discussion as Jesus says, okay, it's time for us to go. And the disciples are going, you know, Bethany is only a little bit far from, from Jerusalem. It's not that far. Last time we went to Jerusalem, people tried to kill you. Are you sure you want to go? And Jesus is saying, yes, we got to go. Now is the time to go when it's still daylight. And they're like, yeah, but you know, and, and Jesus finally had to say, look, Lazarus is dead. And the disciples are finally beginning to understand what Jesus was saying. And they say, okay, well, let's go. In fact, Thomas says, well, then let's go and die with Jesus. So the disciples and Jesus have this, and then they finally go. And then the next uh, passage says, and when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed home. Martha went out to meet him. Instead of having Jesus come to the house, she knew he was coming, but instead of having Jesus come to the house, catch this, she goes out to meet him. Mary stays home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you anything you ask. Lord, if you had been here, how many times have I approached God with that kind of mentality, with what I think he should have done rather than what he's actually doing? How many times I have come to Jesus with who I think he should be rather than who he is already for me? It's as if we need to let, we need to, manipulate God or control God and, and we say words like this and Martha was great at it now Jesus loved Martha Martha knew that Jesus loved Martha Jesus loved Lazarus and Mary Jesus Martha knew that Jesus loved them all and yet she's still trying to figure out how do I say this Jesus said in verse 23 your brother will rise and live again That's good news. And Martha answered, I know that he will rise and live again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus says these amazing, magical words. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Martha, do you understand who you are talking to? You are talking to the great I am. That's what Jesus was saying. Martha was saying, Jesus, wouldn't it have been nice if you would have been here? Because if you would have been here, that, then he wouldn't have died. But even though you didn't come when I needed you to come, you could still do something. I know that, but I needed you to come when I needed you to come. We see we're still doing that kind of the talk. We do this all the time. And Jesus is saying, Martha, I need you to let go of who you want me to be so you can accept who I am because I am the resurrection and the life. Before Abraham was, I am. I am he. I am the one who makes life. I am the one who gives life. I am. Even now, I am. He is. Not he was. Not he will be. He is. And then he says, do you believe this? It's as if he's asking Martha, are you getting what I'm saying? Do you believe this? Those who believe in me, he says, will have life even if they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Martha, do you believe this? And man, Martha answered, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming to the world. I love that answer. Because... 
what Martha was saying is, uh, I believe way more than that. I believe, I believe that you are the I am. You are the one that is to come. You are the Messiah. That's what Christ means. You are the Savior. I believe you're it, the one coming to the world. I know that. So she leaves Jesus, the Bible says, and at the entrance of town. I love this. Jesus doesn't follow her. He waits there at the entrance of town. It's as almost as if he's waiting for an intro introduction or he's waiting for an invitation. Maybe that's a better word to use. I love that about Jesus. You know, Jesus will never force himself. This is a town that he went to often. This is a place that he loved to go because his friends were there. But at this point, he's feeling like, maybe I can't go yet. I need to be invited to go. Go get Mary. So Martha goes and gets Mary. And then Mary comes, and Mary repeats what Martha's sentiments were. Oh, Jesus, if only you would have been here. It does the same thing that Martha said. And then there's something quite amazing that happens. The Bible tells us that Jesus goes to the tomb, and he sees all them that are mourning, and he weeps. Now, don't miss this, because this is so cool about Jesus. The Bible says he goes to the tomb and he weeps. See, before Jesus reveals his authority, he is expressing his empathy. That is an amazing thing about Jesus. Have you ever, have you ever, he's about to do something amazing right now, right? So, like, I, I don't know about you, but I, I know Jesus, Jesus knows what's going to happen. Nobody else does. He's on the scene. He's going to go there and he's going to resurrect Lazarus. We know because we read the Bible in hindsight, but nobody knew at the point. Jesus knows, and yet he is able to conceal his excitement to experience the tenderness of the moment. Now, I can tell you this. God is amazing at this. Have you ever done something like that? Nancy loves to tell the story about a time when she was uh, in her 20s. And her grandmother, uh, I'll be right back here, I want to get this for you. Her grandmother had uh, given her some glasses, like this. They seem kind of weird to me, they're like rainbow color, I don't know. But they're actually called carnival glasses. These are kind of very expensive, you can't find these anywhere. And, and she had gotten these glasses, apparently they come with a whole set, but she only had gotten the glasses. And, and she had gone to a... Um, garage sale and she had found these plates that she wanted to get that actually match the glasses and she's like oh i want those plates i'm going to go home get the money i'll come back i'll buy every one of those plates she didn't even bargain with the lady and the lady's going sure i'll put them aside and get them for you and and and, and i'll wait for you and so nancy goes home she gets the money comes back the next day and uh, the lady says, I, I, I'm sorry, but I sold the plates. And then she says, what? I, I told you I was coming. I told you I was going to get them. You told me you were going to save them for me. Yeah, I know, she says, but somebody came, more money, and I, it, it slipped my mind, and, I, and I, just, I sold them to them. And Nancy was really, really upset. She goes home and tells her mom, can you, remember, can you remember those plates we saw the other day at the garage sale? Can you believe this woman sold them already? And mom was like, are you kidding me? She said she was going to save them for you. I know, mom. Months go by. And then Christmas comes. And Nancy opens up her Christmas gifts from her mom. And in there is a bunch of these plates. Mom had gone and bought the plates. And she knew exactly what was going to happen at Christmas, that the plates and the cup were going to meet. And she concealed her excitement to experience the disappointment that Nancy was feeling. The whole time, she kept it inside. She's like, yeah, I'm just going to play this along. I think Jesus is not just playing along. <coughs> I think Jesus is actually experiencing empathy. I think Jesus is actually 
able in his amazing divine way to put aside the excitement, to conceal that excitement, to have a moment of humanity with Mary and Martha and those who came to console them. The Bible says that Jesus came to the tomb and it was a cave with a large stone covering the entrance. And Jesus said, move the stone away. I love that. I mean, look, Jesus is about to raise somebody from the dead. I mean, he could just say, stone, roll. <laughs> but he doesn't do that. He's actually ordering people to move the stone away. Why? Because I think God wants us to be involved in the miracle. And I think sometimes we, we take for granted God's desire for us to partner with him in this. It's as if he's saying, this is going to be really good. You watch this. And so these guys go around, they move this big stone. Martha's actually saying that he's dead. It's been four days since he died. They will be a bad smell. Some of us are going to come out of this lockdown and we're going to be, make sure we take some showers. Because it's going to be like we're going to be in that tomb. Some of, us, some of us need to be able to know that we need to be able to start smelling good. Start working on that now. And then Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you? But I tell you what, and Jesus says, didn't I tell you? That gets a little, so it gets a little crazy, doesn't it? So they moved the stone away from the entrance. And then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you. Look at this moment. It's so precious. Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me. He's praying out loud. But I said these things because of the people here around me. I needed them to hear this. I want them to believe that you sent me. And everybody's on pins and needles wondering what is going to happen next. And after Jesus said this, he cried, cried, cried out in a loud voice. This is not some little whisper here. This is a moment where he's crying. This is, he, he, he is taking them to the apex of this experience. And it's like, this is emotional now. And he cries out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man, the Bible says, came out. His hands and feet wrapped with pieces of cloth, a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take the cloth off of him and let him go. Lazarus, come out. Lazarus is in the tomb four days waiting under lockdown, sleeping it off. He has no idea when it's going to be over. He has no idea what's going on at all. And suddenly he hears his name. Can you imagine being Lazarus? You know what I love about Lazarus, by the way? We don't hear anything about Lazarus writing a book after this experience. The only thing we know about Lazarus after this experience is that the Jews wanted to kill him too because, because, because he was raised from the dead and he was making Jesus famous. But there was nothing about Lazarus going around preaching, telling people, hey, you should, here's my testimony, man. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Nothing. He was a humble guy. That doesn't mean he didn't do it. We just know that he didn't do it enough so that people would be boasting about it. That's amazing about Lazarus. So suddenly he hears his name and Lazarus come forth. And he comes out. Can you imagine? Again, the Bible doesn't speak about this, but can you imagine the look of surprise on Mary and Martha and those around there? Can you imagine the jubilation? We are not told of the tears of joy and the embraces that they hold on to each other so tightly. This must have been an amazing moment. I can't wait. I can't wait for the day when this lockdown will be lifted and this virus is conquered. I, there's some of you guys that I can't, I'm, I'm, I, I miss your embraces. I miss your hugs. I am tired of the elbow thing. Quite honestly, we don't even get to do that anymore now. You know, and, and it's, it's crazy. Couples not even being able to kiss each other because they're not sure if anybody's got it and what's going on. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a crazy situation. I cannot wait till this is all over. When you recover, what will you do? 
when you recover, will you still be you? Will you be stronger? Will you be new? When you recover from what you've been through, there's a there's a little poem, I guess, or short essay that somebody by the name of Kitty O'Mara wrote uh, that I thought was fantastic. And it begins with this. And the people stayed home. And they read books. And they listened. And rested. And exercised. And made art. And played games. And learned new ways of being. And were still. And listened more deeply. Some of us are right there doing exactly that. In fact, I've asked some of our friends to uh, make short little videos to tell us a little bit about their situation at their home during the lockdown, their moments, until they can hear the voice come forth. So let's watch this little video together. Hello, this is No Makeup Monday, and every day now um, is a pajama and yoga pants day. Lots of things are changing over here, but we are loving the family time. Despite everything that's going on, we are loving one another. We're loving our family dinners, playing outside, and just having a slower pace of life, even though it's getting a little crazy. Hello, everyone. Marlene and I want to express our love to our church family and to let you all know that we are missing you tremendously. As we consider how this virus has affected our lives and the world, we are reminded how much bigger our God is than anything in this universe. I think it's incredible the way that our community and our nation have come together during this time to help each other. And I am so thankful for the internet because it has allowed me to continue my role as a teacher and to be able to still interact and work with my students. I spend with more time with my I'm thankful for the internet because I can still do my schoolwork. Hey, what's up, Richland Church family? I think the positive breakthrough experience that I can say that I have seen through this crisis is the amount of time I'm getting to spend with my kids. I always thought it would be really fun to see if I could teach them, um, but I was nervous about it and wasn't sure how they would respond, so now's been my time. I'm becoming teacher, and we have an awesome schedule, and we love it. I love playing Killer Uno with my family. You play it. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Draw four, Dad. You're asking. Having my daddy home. We have enjoyed spending more time together reading the Bible. What I've liked about being home is we've had a slower pace recently instead of being like all over the place. I have a really awesome devotional study time and prayer time every day. I'm finding that that is been a highlight of mine during this time of extra time. We'd like to share with you a paraphrased version of Romans 8.18 because it means so much to us. When we consider the sufferings of this world, it is nothing compared to the glory that God will reveal to us when He returns in the very new future. I've become very relaxed and unaware of time with a growing sense that this could be what eternity is like. And I have loved learning to connect with people on Zoom. We even talked to former church members Wen Jing and Yafan in Beijing on Saturday night. Hey guys, just wanted to say hi and share my experience with being home during this lockdown. I feel really blessed that I've been able to spend some extra time with those I love, my awesome wife, a crazy dog, and of course, my wonderful and delicious friend, Tillamook Ice Cream. Happy Easter, he has risen. Wasn't that awesome? And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. And then she continues by saying, some meditated, some prayed, some danced. Some met their shadows. And the people began to think differently. And the people healed 
And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed, I love this part, and when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. So, what will it be like? So we wait for that day. We're hoping and the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart sad. There's nothing in this world that is more difficult than, than losing hope. Hope is the one thing that we cannot endure loss of. I've seen people that are able to go on that have lost health. People that we can, we can go on if we lose wealth. We can go on if we lose reputation. We can go on if we lose our career. We can go on if we have relational loss, emotional loss, and yet we can still endure. Humans have suffered all kinds of pains and rejection and isolation and lockdowns with unbroken spirits, but the one thing we cannot survive is the loss of hope. To me, hope is uh, these four words, holding on patiently every day. Hope, holding on patiently every day. Are you holding on to your hope? I know I am every single day. So I cannot wait for the day, not only when the mandate gets lifted and we get to go out of our houses, but I cannot wait for the day when the stay on earth mandate will be lifted and the great I am will call us forth. That is going to be an amazing day. The Bible says, I am the resurrection and the life. Who believes in me shall live even if he dies, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And I think he is asking each and every one of us, do you believe this? Do I believe this? I believe this with all my heart. And I think that is the most amazing part of Christian hope. To believe this, we must believe and experience Jesus, the I am. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. Have you stepped out of darkness into his light? I am the door. Have you stepped across the threshold of eternity? I am the good shepherd. Have you asked him to carry you into the fold? I am the bread of life. Have you been feeding on him? I am the vine. Are you daily sustaining on his grace? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Is he truly your way, your truth, and your life? If he is not, why not take this weekend, this Easter weekend, to make it right and make him your I am? We are not, but he is. We are powerless, but he is powerful. And those of us who recognize that we are not and cannot have the awesome privilege of being connected to the one who not only is everything but can do anything and that name is jesus christ and when that day happens we will sing hallelujah praise the one who set us free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ our living hope you sing that with all your heart on this easter weekend
see all those folks singing together like that even though they're far apart I don't know about you but that is just so powerful it is God singing through each and every one of them playing through each and every one of them let's pray together father may we not lose hope may we on this resurrection weekend contemplate the sacrifice you made on the cross for us 
and even more so, the victory that you won when you came out of that tomb. May we realize that you want to do for us what you did for Lazarus, and that day is coming. It's just a matter of time. May we not lose hope. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a happy, happy Easter.